Uh, meantime, what's happening in America? Well, it's the midterms today. Uh, Biden has been warning of a risk to democracy. Trump has hinted at another run. So what is likely to happen to women um, who enjoy debating this sort of thing? Of course, are um, Scotty and Shola. Hello to you, ladies. Good morning, Scotty. Of course, we should go to you first, given that it's uh, your territory. Nashville, Tennessee is where you are this morning. What are the main issues that we should be looking at for today? Well, while the Democrats are mainly trying to focus and make this all about life and about the Roe versus Wade Supreme Court overturn a few weeks ago, the reality of it is the issues that most Americans are thinking about when they go to the poll and Republicans are urging folks to do is first go to the grocery store and see how much that it costs more now for milk, bread, and eggs. And then on your way to the voting booth, make sure that you go by the gas station and recognize that while prices have come down slightly, we're still increasingly more than where we were even just two years ago. And then on your way to the voting booth, they want to make sure that you're safe and look and realize, is your neighborhood safe as violent crime rates in the United States have increased immensely over the last two years? And of course, Republicans are pinning this on the failed agenda to keep Americans safe of Joe Biden. So between those three aspects, those are actually what are on the top of the minds of most of the American electorate. At least that's what the Republicans are hoping for when they go to the voting booth today. Shola? Yeah, let, let me quickly add, though, that what the Republicans have done very well is to play a strategy of distract and deflect. And they've done this by incorporating, racializing the fear of crime, uh, fundamentalizing election denialism, and deliberately sabotaging reforms, economic reforms and other reforms that the Democrats put forward to be able to help um, Americans live a better life on a daily basis. So it is the Republicans that voted against the Inflation Reduction Act. It's the Republicans that voted against cheaper gas, against cheaper insulin, against abortion rights, i.e. Roe v. Wade, against stimulus checks. It is the Republicans that voted against baby, you know, formula, voted, you know, voting rights act, marriage equality, and so many things that would have made the lives of Americans much better. I want Americans, when they go to the grocery store and have to buy food at a higher price, to remember that it is the Republicans that voted against it, that made this possible. I want them to remember when they go to the gas station and they're paying a higher price, that it is the Republicans that stood against the opportunity for them to buy less. So and what the Democrats have not done as well is to make this the topic of conversation. I think the Democrats thought at some point, all we just need to do is just ride the wave of, of the public being aware of Roe v. Wade, the public being aware that it is the Republicans that have voted against, you know, fundamental reforms that have made their lives better. No, you do not fight fire with staying back and let people just use awareness. So you need to fight fire with fire, and that's what the Democrats need to do better. And as I said, the Republicans have used this uh, midterm elections to become the ground zero of election denialism. Think about it. A lot of the Republican candidates are election denial. It's unbelievable. 22 candidates for governor, 19 candidates for Senate, 12 candidates for Secretary of State, and 10 candidates for Attorney General all have either denied the, uh, the 2020 election or cast doubt in it. Um, do you think now, um, Scotty, forgive me, Scotty Nell Hughes, that, um, that Trump will run again? Well, I want to get to Trump, but I do have to say this, Kay. You want to talk about election denial? You're going to hear the biggest case of election denial tomorrow morning when the Democrats wake up and those races that have been decided are clearly not in their favor. We're about to hear the biggest about of election denials, and that's going to be all the way from dog catcher all the way up to, to federal offices like senator. And and I love what Chola said. I appreciate her compliments, but the reality of it is she can get away with that argument except for the fact that it's the Democrats who are power for both the House, the Senate, and the Oval Office. So you can't blame the Republicans because it's the Democrats that have total power right now. And that's why we're in the state where they're in, which is why I do believe that you will be seeing President Trump taking advantage of the momentum of the of tomorrow and going into it as the hints even went through the last 24 hours that he was going to announce. He is going to probably take full credit for a lot of the power being taken back in the House and Senate, despite them losing it during the Trump administration. So, yes, I do think that you will be seeing a Trump announcement coming soon. But I also think that also means that just gears up probably for more prosecution coming from the FBI and others who have been trying to continue to make sure that they find Donald Trump in handcuffs being led up the court stairs. We'll see how the two counter for each other. Makes for great TV. Oh, my goodness. I think, Scotty, you and I agree a 
on something though. We agree that Trump is going to try to come back to, to run again and take credit. Absolutely, that is, that is DNA. But where we disagree, we just met a much, right? Where we disagree is this. You say that you, know, you can't blame the Republicans. It's because the Democrats are in power. That's not the point. It is the actions that the Republicans take with the power that they have in Senate, in the House of Representatives. They voted against crucial reforms that would help the American people. So the American people need to understand where their bread is buttered, and it is not with the Republicans. That's the point I'm making. And about Trump, now, let's make this really clear. If Donald Trump Trump is able to run again and potentially win and become the you know the next president of, uh, of the United States of America. Let's just understand that this is an indictment of U.S. politics, which is already suspect, and an indictment of the American society. How can you have the person who single-handedly incited the the biggest insurrection of U.S. democracy in modern history be able to run against run again for office? The person who has ensured that election can no longer be trusted, that the very okay. foundation of U.S. democracy cannot be, you know, guys. be trusted. How can you have that person back as U.S. president? Okay, guys, that's a, a good taster for what's going to happen today. Hopefully, we might be able to chat to you about the results tomorrow. It's great to see you both. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.